She met his lips and pressed back, her hands wandering into his zipper hole to feel his cock, stroking at him, pulling him free before he bro she broke the kiss and knelt further down, her tongue and lips dragging over his shaft, making his legs shudder, and within seconds he had shot a thick load of cum into Laylee's mouth. Her f his fingers rubbing through her hair, feeling the realness of it. Laylee coughed slightly as the cum shot was so tremendous she couldn't possibly swallow it all. Her cheeks puffed out slightly as her mouth packed with cum until one more score of his cock made cum gush out of her lips and down her chin. Oh, hello, Zach. I didn't see you there. I uh, see you're catching up with some literature, I guess? Yes, and contrary to what you might be thinking, this doesn't have anything to do with the Monster Girl encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. This is actually a piece of literature, so I'm even less ashamed to be reading from it. It's called King Wolf Heretic, and to sum it up, it's about a young man named Thomas, 22 years old, who is isolated from society by his family. And this is because he's a werewolf, not just any werewolf, the king of all werewolves. A young woman named Laylee one night finds him and whisks him away into a an, into an adventure full of sex and violence, but mostly sex from what I can tell so far. Um, this is available on Amazon. It's from the same person who created Kill Everything, which should be evident from the fact that uh, this werewolf, werewolf waifu uh, also is the main character of Kill Everything. I see, I see. Yes, um, I would highly recommend this. Uh, I can see why. Um, so yeah, you can find this on Amazon. It is called King Wolf Heretic. Um, but on that note, welcome to the Monkey Bar. My name is Tony. I'm, jo I'm joined by Zach here. And Zach, you have a stack of papers right there. I do, I do, because today is going to be a game show day. Oh, a bit of uh, some uh, pop quiz hotshot, I see. No. God, no. Okay, thank God. It is a Showa or Stupid, and I will explain in a little bit. All right. Um, but I think we can. Ex you can start explaining right now. Most certainly. So can s seeing that uh, uh, the subject of today will be mostly about what you have there. Yep, it's Godzilla. I call this Showa or Stupid, but this is just a collection of some of the greatest what-the-fuck moments of Godzilla, but there's a couple I've thrown in that are fake. The point of a game is for Tony to see which ones are BS and which one are real. Uh, Tony being me, by yes. the way. Cool, I'm sorry. Uh, and I think it's the good time to start. Alright, so I just need to guess which ones are real and which ones aren't. Yeah. Ah, basically, okay. Alright, so first one. Godzilla having a tree shoved down his throat and proceeding to spit it out of his mouth like a missile. I'm going to say that's true. Yep, Godzilla vs. King Kong. I remember this one, but I don't remember what all of these are from. You have to know we're on this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think that the best strategy here is to just uh, listen to the ones that are the weirdest and say that those are real. <laughs> Godzilla playing volleyball with a boulder, and he uses it to his advantage in a fight. Okay, I know this is real, because I saw this on like from a nature documentary of all of There's like 12 times he does this. Mm -hmm. It's like once in every couple of movies they have to do this. Godzilla fighting with Rodan, and Mothra picks it up by shooting web jizz into Godzilla's face, making Rodan laugh, only to be web jizzed on too, making Godzilla laugh so hard he sits down out of breath. I am going to guess that this is real. Yep, it's one of my favorite scenes. Godzilla fighting Frankenstein's monster, who was exposed to radiation during Hiroshima. The monster later teams up with him against Dr. Frankenstein's newer monsters. Hmm, I'm going to say... Judging by the last episode, I know that Frankenstein is a prominent uh, giant monster. I'm going to say this is real. Nope. It was a movie that almost got me. I'm not sure about the later part, but it sounded real to me. Number five. Godzilla seeking to catch a flying turd monster squats and breathes fire, propelling himself through the skies of Japan. This, is, this sounds a lot weirder than the last one, so I'm going to say that's true. Godzilla fighting a giant... Oh, it, was it? Yes, I'm sorry, it was. Oh. Yes, it was. It's Godzilla vs. Hedora, which is, which is co-starred by Mr. Hankey. Hmm. Godzilla fighting a giant child-eating dragon, who he has to kill by going back in time to when it was a child. Once there, he teams up with ancient Godzilla sources in his cocoon for millennia. Hmm. Oh, I'm going to say, based on 
The fact that this is also pretty weird. Yes, this is true. Actually, it's a half point. I, it's a Mothra movie. Hmm. It's just uh, Mothra said Godzilla. They have King Ghidorah, as I call him, the pedivore, because he eats children. Ah. <laughs> yeah. You're doing pretty well. A terrorist, oh, a terrorist cell known as Red Bamboo uses fruits to control a giant lobster in Phoenix and is led by a man with an awesome flower eye patch. Uh, giant lobsters in Phoenix. That sounds like the plot of Teenagers from Outer Space, actually. Um, but I'm going to say this is true. Yes, it is. It was Eberus the Horror from the Deep, my favorite Godzilla movie at the time. Hmm, never heard of it. Wow. Godzilla in the battle with Mechagodzilla uses a magnetic pulse to defeat his foes. Well, this sounds rather pedestrian, so I'm going to say it's false. It's true. I had to throw one of those in. It was in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. Mechagodzilla tries flying away, and Godzilla's like, no, nope, bitch, and sucks him over. Number nine. Godzilla gets shot in the balls by King Ghidorah and is defeated only for King Ghidorah to fly off with him, only to drop him balls first into a power stub station. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is true. Yes, it is. And it's kind of funny because they have Godzilla start screeching and he's getting zapped in the balls. And you can kind of see Rodan in the background. You know, he, they can't really, they never animate the eyes on him, but he drops his wings and he looks like he's in shock. Godzilla, or uh, ten. Godzilla is killed by a horseshoe crab with a magical unicorn horn. And the sun sets, or uh, eats radiation becomes the next Godzilla. Um, let's see. Oh, I want to mention, like, is that uh, a giant horseshoe crab with a horn? That sounds like uh, Megalon. So. Destroyer. Okay. Um, so crab. I'm going. Well, I'm going to say that that's true. Yep. Well, he's actually a horseshoe crab that get, who eats the bomb they used to kill the first one. So he gets really big and he gets a magical horn. It also rips off aliens shamelessly. Um, Godzilla is, er, Godzilla's son is kidnapped by Godzilla's weird foreign brother, who later imprisons him into a dungeon. I'm going to say that is true. Yep. I don't have many false points because I couldn't make shit up. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, number 12 is Rodan, grabbing onto Godzilla's shoulders, flies him into King Ghidorah, tumbling them off a cliff. Well, that sounds like something you'd see in a Hollywood movie, so I will say that's false. Yes, it is false. No, wait, no, it's not. I meant, yes, it is true. I'm, just, I'm sorry. But yeah, it's kind of funny because they actually, when they did the effect, one of the actors broke his shoulder on the first take, and that take actually ended up botched, as you can see the microphone. So they just filled the suit, and they had him fly over, and they knocked the empty suits down the hall. I heard if you look, you can actually see the chest compressed, there's nothing in it. On 13, an alien run amusement park he uses toys of King Ghidorah and Gigan, some of them from space. Also, alien roaches. Well, I'm going to say... See, it sounds like a lot of production value, like a lot of uh, elements. So I'm not entirely sure, but I will say true. Yes, it is. It is Gigan, the space monster, I think it was called. They have toys of God's, uh, King Ghidorah and, G and Gigan. And they have these magic powers. It was actually the first time Angiris was shown as a good guy. Hmm. It's a cool film because they actually have Godzilla get zipped across the, the, the neck of a buzzsaw and blood comes shooting out. <laughs> it was kind of graphic. Is it blood red? Or? Yes. Huh. I thought it would be green because like, he's radioactive. They didn't have the budget for green blood. Right, right. <laughs> You know, you can only have some effects. Uh, Godzilla is tricked by a hypersonic bird sound to walk into a volcano. Um... I'm going to say that this is false. It's actually Godzilla 1980, I believe it came out. The Return of Godzilla or something like that. Um, basically, they kill him by using bird sounds, where they find out that birds sound like dinosaurs. And he walks into a volcano only to survive. And finally, 15. Godzilla is really a construct of all those who have died in the Pacific Theater to stop at the power of love in the giant drill. I am going to say, hmm, this is a tough one. I'm going to say, false? True. Ah. Godzilla versus, it's called Godzilla versus Mothra, King Ghidorah, all out giant monster attack. <laughs> it's one of my favorite films because, how do we kill Godzilla? No weapon can hurt him. So they fly a drill into his throat and it digs a hole in there. He shoots out a fire beam and it creates a bigger hole. As he breathes out more fire, it completely decapitates him. <laughs> Sounds like the like that mixed with the like hope and all that stuff reminds me of Gurren Logon. 
Maybe that's, maybe that's where they got the Even idea. Even the giant drill. Yep, yep. I really want to see that crossover of, like, Kamina getting eaten by Godzilla. Oh, that, yeah, that would be neat. Uh, Godzilla versus, uh, versus Gurren Lagann. That would, that would be, I would love to see that. Because, you see, it would work better in Godzilla versus Ava, which is a real movie come now, because Ava has an AT field. Godzilla can't hurt an AT field because nothing can get through, not even a nuclear bomb. Yeah, I'm nerding out again. I mean, I'm right there with you. Uh, and so the next part I had the idea of is me and Tony talk about these unmade Godzilla films. They are actually real. I use Wikizilla as my main source of information because I can't read Japanese. So today I have five strange films that almost got made. My plan is to read them, then we could discuss them. The first one is called A Space Godzilla, which has no ties to the movie uh, Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. In Arizona, strange signals are detected coming from a dark nebula. Meanwhile, Godzilla washes up on the shores of Japan, dying of diabetes. Scientists are able to examine the monster's organs, including its brain, and after an attempt to communicate the brain psychically, it is discovered that Godzilla is actually an intelligent alien creature named Roseanne, from the Godzilla planet, located in the region where the strange dark nebula signals originated, and is pregnant with child. Against protests of the victims of Roseanne's rampage, the monster's body is transformed into a rocket in order to send her and her unborn child back to their home planet. Once there, Roseanne and her child Lillian are reunited with their husband slash father, Kunin. The Godzilla planet comes under attack from an alien race known as the Sunarians, a species of half-human looking creatures. Kunin and the now grown up Lillian battle the Sunian's general, Gamoni, in order to defend the planet, eventually emerging victorious. That was a real thing they considered. That's, uh, that's a lot to take in. Yeah, I mean, my favorite thing is Godzilla's real name is Roseanne. Yeah, I, I'm surprised that her husband's name wasn't John Goodman. <laughs> they, mentioned, uh, they mentioned Godzilla enough in that show. Hmm. They have a Godzilla statue and a reaction figure in the living room. Huh. I've never actually watched Roseanne. I kind of like this. Show. I've heard it's good. Yeah. I heard the reboot's good, too. I haven't seen the reboot. I don't, I don't have time for TV. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that sounds like it has everything. It's got uh, Godzilla, Roseanne, diabetes. Um, I just want to see Wilford Brimley's face, but I'm Godzilla, diabetes. <laughs> you can post that on your Discord. Um, is that how it works? I don't know. I'm I'm, out, I'm so out of touch. I don't even know how bread works. I think bread is what you use to hold the butter so you can eat it. <laughs> uh, Reddit, Reddit, yeah. I actually didn't know if that was a real meme, I just made it up. Uh, I mean, yeah, comment section, do your work. Whatever. I don't, I don't fucking care. Yeah, my favorite about the whole thing is Godzilla. Missiles bounce off of him. Tanks can't pierce his skin. Giant nuclear powered robots don't even hurt him. Dies of diabetes. <laughs> Maybe in the maybe in where the monsters will uh, die of AIDS, or something more, <laughs> something more topical. Ah, uh, diabetes is still topical. Whatever. And so I'm just picturing like you know it's oh my god, what's that movie up? What's the movie? Philadelphia. Yeah. I'm thinking, oh no no no, it would be a crossover with the vampire, the vampire movie from Riddler Media, the last vampire oh, yeah, on Earth, yeah. the last Godzilla on Earth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I like Riddler. Uh, uh, next one. Uh, Godzilla Legend of Asuka Fortress, also known as Godzilla vs. Asuka. Mm-hmm. I clicked on this link expecting something very different. Uh-huh. It's, it would have been called Godzilla x Asuka with what you were probably thinking. <laughs> so there's actually a little history in this one that I found. Godzilla Legend of Asuka's Fortress was proposed by, uh, by um, Shinshi uh, Sikazawa to revive the Godzilla franchise after a series, several year long hiatus following Terra Mechagodzilla. It was proposed in the late 1970s and went through story drafts and revisions before being scrapped. I realized that was a bit close. I'm... The film was pr- uh, uh, with the Godzilla series finally being resided in 1984 as the return of Godzilla. Elements and concepts of the movie was actually recycled for a movie called Gunhead. Um, the plot is that in the year 2000, Godzilla has been successfully sedated deep within the Jap- Japan trench by uh, means of a special frequency. Meanwhile, Dr. Yasuda Ito has invented and constructed a new super weapon dubbed the Asuka Fortress, or Big Boy in later drafts. A, mount, a mountainous robot supercomputer built to defend Japan against all threats. The Prime Minister intends to use a robot to enforce world peace under the banner of the World Peace uh, Uni- 
Unicorn, I read that as Unicorn Unicorn League. But instead, both he and his cabinet end up becoming Asuka's fortresses versus victims when it gains independence with the goal of exterminating all of her life on Earth. Realizing how desperate the situation will come, a group of computer technicians and scientists who helped build the fortress, led by a man named Son of Heaven, hmm, free Godzilla from his underwater prison to battle the rogue superweapon. The Asuka fortresses realizes Godzilla is the only being capable of destroying it, and constructs and sends forth several robotic minions to assassinate the King of Monsters. Godzilla, Godzilla eventually makes his way to Asuka Fortress itself, but the machine proves too powerful for him to defeat, until Son of Heaven and his friends uh, infiltrate the fortress and shut down from inside. When the Asuka Fortress deactivates and human hears out of harm way, Godzilla obliterates the motionless mechanical behemoth. So basically, it wanted to say, hey, remember Mechagodzilla? This is bigger. It steps on Mechagodzilla. Hmm. It sounds pretty dense. Uh, All of these are because there's really two kinds of Godzilla films they make. Either I have this big epic plot, or hey man, uh, we have this cool idea for it's a it's a turtle that flies and breathes fire. Let's use him. Has there ever been uh, Godzilla versus Ultraman? No, but they use um, one of the Godzilla suits in Ultraman. They put him in a green fur and put a horn on his head and call him Gajira. Hmm. Hmm. It's or like Jira or something like that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just a bit hung up on the guy being named Son of Heaven. Uh -huh. You know, Godzilla and the Son of Heaven. It, it sounds like a, a Kirk Cameron movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I would love to see uh, uh, God's Not Dead 4 versus Godzilla. Uh, it's it's just, they bring back Kevin Sorbo. Oh, do, do a parody called Godzilla's Not Dead. Oh my god. And it's like uh, Jesus Bro. And at the end, you have to like text... Godzilla's not dead, for he surely destroyed Japan. Uh -huh. I mean, there's a giant, cr there's a giant crater that looks like his foot. He's clearly still alive. Oh my god! You know, like we're looking for Godzilla after they use the thing on him. In the ending, has a bad or a good guy standing at the end of the hill, and Godzilla comes out from the ocean. And goes Godzilla. Has there been like that in the movie, in a Godzilla movie, where there's like a cult devoted to Godzilla? There's not so much to vote for him, but there's a Godzilla versus, or Godzilla 2000 actually, has a character whose family was killed by him in the 50s. So he has grown up his entire life wanting to kill Godzilla. Huh. It doesn't really count, but I remember once he was like, he goes, Godzilla! And Godzilla looks over, stomps him, <laughs> walks away. <laughs> yeah, you ready for the next one? Uh, that one looks really long. Oh, no, that was the one I just read. Oh, okay. Oh, thank, thank you. Yeah, I made sure these aren't too long, because apparently there was one called Godzilla 2 from a 1998 movie, and all they're supposed to be with 18 other monsters in it. Mm. And it's going to be like Godzilla becomes like a rogue soldier and hunts him down, but that's all that we know other than monsters up the ass. And was Matthew Browder going to be in that one too? Yeah, but he was going to be like the Godzilla rider. Huh. He was going to ride on Godzilla? Or something like that. I just put a picture of Matthew Browder. Oh no, Godzilla, use your fire breath. Yeah, it's, what was his name in the, in the movie, Stephanopoulos? No, it's like, it's like, k k k k Stathopoulos. 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 I hate him. I hate his name. Yeah, everybody kept getting it wrong. That was kind of the running joke. Because I think the writer couldn't even say it right. Yeah. Next up is Resurrection of Godzilla 1930 draft. In 1980, Tomoyuku Tanaka and Akira Mura, I apologize for you people, proposed a revival film for Godzilla franchise titled Resurrection of Godzilla. While Tanaka felt the script he and Murano created and embodied a great deal of what he won for the next Godzilla film, it went under revisions over the next several years. In 1983, Murano and Hidichi Nagahara com collaborated to make a new version of the script, which, while very close to Tanaka's 1980, proposed a difference in a few ways. Ultimately, the idea was discarded and replaced by what would become the 16th Godzilla film and the first of a Hefe series, Return of Godzilla. I said it earlier before we started recording, Godzilla's in four eras. You have uh, Showa, which is the original, Hefe, which is the next one, Millennium, which is the ones I, I don't remember which one started that one, and then you have the legendary film, this Monsterverse. And here's the plot of Resurrection of Godzilla. Hey, mind if I read these? Oh, sure. I realize I'm a bad reader. Yeah, you tend to read a bit fast, so, um... Yeah. You know, offense. It's fine. Uh, but the plot... <laughs> Sorry, I, I just saw the plot, the, the title of the next one. 
Uh, we'll get to that in a minute, I, I guess. Um, this one's called, uh, what again? Resurrection? Res Resurrection of Godzilla 1983. Yeah, I was just making, I was just saying that you, you, you have trouble speaking. I, I can barely get the words out now. Um, yeah, uh, was a podcast. I just completely forgot the minute you this said. One. Yeah, Resurrection of Godzilla. Thank yeah. you. 1983. 1983. A shape shifting mystical creature called Bagon appears in Japan and battles the, S the JSDF, switching between its three forms an ape, a dragon, and a fish. Meanwhile, illegal nuclear dumping in the Pacific Ocean awakens Godzilla, who travels to Japan in search of more nuclear fuel. When Godzilla arrives, he encounters Bagon, who is unable to defeat Godzilla. Bagon tr transforms into a totem-like composite of his three forms and fights Godzilla again. This time, however, Godzilla destroys Bagon for good. With Bagon out of the way and the JSDF's advanced superweapons destroyed, Godzilla rampages through Japan, causing the government to fear he will attack Tokyo. A scientist named Dr. Inamura is convinced to use his nuclear fission device, the Ray the Ray Conium. We, we just had Oscar, now we have Ray Conium. Huh. Hmm. Oh, no. I'm, I'm sensing a pattern here. In order to hopefully kill Godzilla, the Ray Conium is used to lure Godzilla to a remote atoll, and is detonated once Godzilla nears it. Godzilla is consumed in a fiery explosion and falls into the sea, seemingly defeated. However, Godzilla later washes ashore on the west coast of the United States where he was awakened by a nearby nuclear power plant and lets out a vicious roar. I mean, as if anybody actually thinks that Godzilla dies at the end of these. He does in one. Uh, yeah. Actually, he dies in a couple. But, like, when he does die, it's either, you know, you see, like, the heartbeat or, like... Yeah, or the eye opens slowly. Uh, what, uh, what can you tell me about this? Uh, Bagan actually showed up in an official work. Mm. It was showed, um, it was uh, Godzilla for the SNES. Mm. He's the final boss. Unfortunately, he doesn't do his, his totem pole form. Mm -hmm. um, what I do know is that Bagan is like, to the Godzilla series, he's kind of the most famous non-canon character. Because mm. they've been trying to use him forever, and they never really use him. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if the Monsterverse uses him, you know. He's going to be either Thanos, like Godzilla and King Kong go, there's another way. Uh -huh. I just want to see King Kong and Godzilla hire. Oh! Uh -huh. Yeah, like, I can see them teaming up and, like, doing that. Like, yeah. Um, I, I, I really still like the idea of him, of King Kong using electricity blasts. I really, no, no, what he does is he uses the electricity to power up Godzilla. Mm hmm and at the end they cut the world half like I get this half to get that <laughs> um, you, you really like the next one I think oh yeah um, this is the one I did the least I, I, I copy and pasted my notes and yeah. Really read them. yeah I feel kind of I feel kind of bad for stealing this being able to say, say the title uh, because it's, like, it's called uh, Batman vs. Godzilla and that and that is poss possibly one like probably in the top 10 most awesome titles I've ever seen for a movie uh, the plot is... Oh, I do have a couple notes on oh. history first. Oh, yeah. It was going to be an actual production with the Adam West Greenway team, mm. but the problem was that they the actors felt they weren't being paid enough because mm. they were being paid Japanese wages. Oh, yeah. And the... Were they being paid, like, uh, a th like a thousand yen for a thousand dollars? or Pretty much, or some shit like that. It's like... Uh... Because it took me a while to get the hang of, uh, or, like, figuring out Japanese currency because, yeah, I guess, uh... 100 yen factors to about uh, one dollar um because like yeah you, th you have to think of it as the decimal point being like two spaces uh to the left like can you imagine being paid like a one yen for your work <laughs> so i remember a simpsons episode the one where they go to japan and homer was like mm, 50 dollar pretzel and i guess like 50 fi that's 50 yen but fifty dollars, like, and fifty yen would be like fifty cents in uh, United States currency. It's it's a little confusing, but once you get the hang of it, okay. But we've we've delayed this long enough. The plot of Batman versus Godzilla. Barbara and her father, Commissioner Gordon, are taking a boat across the Far East when one of Barbara's friends from Vassar, Reiko Hamamoto, appears. 
Eventually, a tidal wave capsizes their boat that was seemingly caused by Klaus Finster, a German meteorologist who, after 20 years of being holed up in Argentina, has migrated to Japan, and now has a secret lair underneath Mount Fuji. The mad Finster claims to have a weather machine that he'll use to destroy Japan unless given $20 million worth of gold. Gordon... Mm-hmm. That was, an, that was an Austin Powers reference. I was doing the, the pinky thing. For, whatever. Uh, he claims to... Da, da. Gordon realizes there are only two men for this job. The Cape Crusader and the Boy Wonder themselves, Batman and Robin. Unknown to the dynamic duo and their allies, Finster doesn't have control over the weather, but actually has control over Godzilla. Finster uses his control to make the giant reptile leave the Mariana Trench and head toward Japan once more. Batman and Robin, after battling a robotic copy of their ally Count Dry... Dry... Drydle? Dreidel? Dry... Dry... What does that say? Uh, that's... Dreidel? You're no help. Dreidel. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> that, that, that guy. Meet with Gordon and the Japanese police. Batman having suspicions of Godzilla's involvement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is... <laughs> yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. He just, I suspect, uh, I suspect that Godzilla is involved in this. Yeah, watches, watches footage of the beast's battle with King Kong to make sure he's right. Oh this, my god, it's already a Godzilla film. Are we using stock film in the script? Oh yeah, this is this is amazing so far. Uh, a waiting game ensues, and when a kabuki show turns into a sword fight, Reiko is revealed to be one of Finster's spy robots after an accidental decapitation. What? Hmm. Batman and Robin give chase to Finster, and the duo are trapped in a poison gas chamber that was disguised as a taxi cab. This is, this is getting weirder by the minute. Uh, Barbara, now having donned the Batgirl attire, frees, frees them with a pocket-sized blowtorch. I wonder, does it say bat blow? No, it doesn't say bat blowtorch. Yeah, what kind of... Okay. Um, after a chase through a Japanese bathhouse... They finally encounter Godzilla. This time is it the, this first time is a turbulent recon mission in the Batcopter. The mission causes Batman to go into a state of nervous agitation, and they take a bullet train to Osaka. When word arrives that the city's the city is Finster's next target, they eventually devise a plan: lure Godzilla with Godzilla with a mating call and knock the giant out with explosives. After this, he surveys the Japanese people who unanimously vote to send the creature into space. Good plan. Uh, with their plan in sp- with their plan in place, and after a chase and fight with Klaus Finster that ends with the mad scientist falling to his death, Batman, Batgirl, and Robin all engage Godzilla with their vehicles, with the giant beast grabbing Batgirl during the fight. Batman unflinchingly uses the call anyways, causing Godzilla to throw Barbara Gordon away, with the young woman landing all the way at the da- Daibutsu Buddha. <laughs> uh, Batman scales Godzilla and plants the bomb on his neck, tying it to the beast with bat rope before he before he moves to safety and detonates it, knocking the beast out. Um, Japanese scientists build a rocket around Godzilla while he is unconscious before ultimately launching the rocket into orbit above Earth's surface with Godzilla forever, quote-unquote, contained within. Okay. My favorite thing of this whole this whole shit show is he's a mad meteorologist. How does meteorology control Godzilla? Well, I mean, by comic book logic, it makes sense because I think of uh, the Flash villain Weather Wizard. Oh yeah. Um, so you gotta think of it. I mean, comic book logic isn't that different from kaiju logic when you think about it. Pretty much. The difference is the scale of a bad guy. Really, it seems like a match made in heaven because Godzilla's goofy. Batman uh, Am West series is goofy. Um, I would watch the shit out of it. Yeah, I'd like to actually watch this too. Like, I would, I would pay money to kickstart this. I mean, uh, what, uh, yeah, this wasn't made. No. Okay. None oh. of these were made. Oh, okay. Uh, I must have forgot. See, I, I, I just had a cup of coffee, like, uh, because I was trying to go the day without coffee. Three weeks ago. Yeah, <laughs> or yeah, like, just uh, like a couple hours ago. So I feel like I just woke up a couple hours ago, even though you know I've been up since. 10 o'clock or so. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this, this sounds amazing. Um, I really want, like, you know, holy, re- re- holy nuclear monsters, Batman. Yeah, or, yeah, holy, 
Yeah, holy Hiroshima, Batman. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, this movie wouldn't be able to get made because, you know, Am West uh, passed uh, last year. I know, but uh, make it like a, a Thor filmmaker fan project. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they should do this after uh, they release a, a Ninja Batman. Oh, God, that would be amazing. Yeah. No, oh God, do you be horrible? Oh, I'm sorry about me. If we we need animators, hire Shad Man. <laughs> He's done like he actually has done background uh, work for animated uh, web productions. He does do good backgrounds. I love his backgrounds actually, <laughs> among other things. It's funny how like that's the one professional thing that he's known for, and all those other stuff is like completely different. Yeah, and we got one more, and this has been a personal meme between. Oh us. yeah, speaking of uh, depraved, perverted, uh, fetish stuff, <laughs> this next one is called the Bride of Godzilla. Should I give some history notes? Oh yeah, sure. I looked up history on this. Apparently, there's there's two theories on why this was never made. The first one, more commonly believed, is that Ashiro Honda laughed when they told him the premise. And the more and the one that other people believe is that they couldn't find the schoolgirl who had the wrestling skills required. Mm. And that will be your hint of what this is. I mean, they probably could find the. Like there are some like now that uh, Japanese pro wrestling yeah. is a big thing, they they could probably find the, the perfect match easy now. Um, but the plot of Bride of Godzilla is as follows: A mad scientist known as Doctor Shida builds a robot in the likeness of his wife. However, as Godzilla and Angiris return, he also builds a giant feminine robot, robot daughter, quote unquote, um, in the image of his foster daughter to fight them. According to Dr. Kohei Yam Yamane's thesis from the original Godzilla film, where Dr. Yamane explains Godzilla, where, where I'm just trying, oh yeah, where where Dr. Yamane explains Godzilla went undetected for so long because he lived in the trenches. That's, that's that sentence is kind of choppy. It is. Oh. oh, did you type this? No, I copied. No. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. It's, it's, it's trenches. Uh. Dr. Shida proposes that doc that. Godzilla and Ingiris lived so deep into the uh, into o the ocean trenches that they come from the center of a hollow earth. Inside the hollow earth, Dr. Shida finds many Godzillas, Angirises, and would it be Angirai? Maybe. Whatever. Um, and a race of beautiful mermaids. He falls in love with one of the mermaids. During a fight between Godzilla and Angiris, a giant blood-sucking flea is lodged from Angiris's shell. Then Godzilla, Angiris, a giant chameleon, and a giant... Ar yeah. Archaeopteryx appear in Kyushu. Robot Daughter is fin. <laughs> I just love how her name is just Robot Daughter. Um, it, Robot Daughter is finished and is sent to defend Japan. She defeats the giant chameleon, the giant Ariopteryx, breaks Angiris' jaw, and then faces Godzilla. Robot Daughter is unaffected by Godzilla's atomic breath. Godzilla seems to fall in love with Robot Daughter and goes into a cave with the naked Robot Daughter. One character says, it is the foreplay of love to be beaten. Uh, I think I was going to say something about this, but I've lost my train of thought for obvious reasons. <laughs> That's a real hard right turn. Yeah. Well, I think that well, I like the like the note about Hollow Earth. Maybe yeah. this takes place uh, sometime after uh, Kong Skull Island. You know what? Kong Skull... This is supposed to be the third movie. Mm in the franchise, but the problem was they didn't want to make another quick sequel was one of the things that I also read, but then they made Godzilla vs. King Kong as soon as they got a color camera. Is a question mark part of the title, or did you just add that yourself? No one knows what the actual title was. Oh. Bride of Godzilla is the one most often used, because mm -hmm. um, this it, it's weird. Mm -hmm. Robot Daughter isn't even her name. It was the placeholder in a script. Mm -hmm. We're gonna call her like you know, or like like Ray. <laughs> no, Shinjina. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! It's a giant Masado. Yeah. Hide the beer. <laughs> this reminds me of uh, probably a, like a Simpsons episode where a giant Homer like uh, crushes the like like the lifts up beer. the Duff Beer Factory and just I'm, I might be imagining that wrong. That might have been something else. Something there was a commercial for Godzilla in 1998 where they haven't picked up a Doritos. Yeah, I remember that one. And there were actually two versions of that. There's one where it's the regular Doritos, the one where it's, like spicy, one where it's spicy, and then he jumps in the water. Yeah. Do you know what I want to see though? Well, that just made that just made me like realize that uh, Godzilla doesn't actually breathe fire in the 98 version. Yeah. It just made me so mad. Oh, do you know what he did? He burped onto an open flame. Mm. 
I'm sorry. Like, I just want to see Godzilla walk over and go, you disappoint. Have him, like, pull out this invisible belt, like, his scales about like a belt beats her feet. Godzilla beats his own kid. Like, there's a scene in Son of Godzilla where they show him and he, and, you know, his kid gets hit in the face with a rock while we're playing volleyball. And he turns around his tail hits the kid in the head. And he turns around and hits the kid and just hit him. I wish he would have done that in the original cartoon. Or, like... It's his nephew. He can't beat his nephew. Oh, Godzuki is his nephew? Yeah. Oh. It's sad, I know, Laura. I wanted to do enough. I think if we ever do another episode of Godzilla, we could do the cartoon episodes because not all of them were saved. Uh-huh. I mean, I would, like, for the next episode, I would like to go back to the regular monster oh, stuff. Yeah. Just because, like, we just done uh, King Kong and Ram- then Godzilla and Rampage back to back. Yeah. Uh, like, Ava. we'll get. Yeah, I'd like to get back to werewolf we pornography. To do- <laughs> Dude, I, I really want to see Bride of Godzilla, but I really want it to be, like, a really dark movie. Like, you know, Godzilla gets, like, they're breaking gears his jaw, which is a running joke in the series. Because whenever we need to defeat him, they break his jaw. They broke his jaw a lot. What's the most recent uh, Japanese Godzilla? Shin Gojira. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's Haide Kiano. He actually did a short uh, fan film of Ultraman called, like, Ultraman Reborn. And it's just, uh, it was, this was back in, like, the... I want to say he did it before Ava, uh, Ava did. And, like, it was just uh, Anno himself in front of a green screen. And he, he played Ultraman. He was just, like, this giant schlubby guy just falling around. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I love Hideki Anno. Yeah. Because, when I, Hideki Anno. Because when I need to think of someone who is thoroughly pathetic, he has a, he's a certain Valentine. A certain Valentine got a record <laughs> Oh, uh, for those of you at home, uh, we're talking about uh, this uh, short film. Or... I want to say it's actually feature length. It's like it f- 58 minutes of pure cringe called uh, Life on Shuffle, the CERN Valentine story. And it's by these guys who I've followed for a long time. Ever since Be, nice Be Nice to Me Productions. I followed them since uh, they put out a video titled, it's currently titled Consensual. No, it's not the fuck oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's called Fuck Van, and I saw it on Facebook. I managed to download it off of Facebook, because, like, they had to censor it. It was like a parody of porn sites, and they had some pr- kind of, gra- like, like about as graphic as you can get without showing actual dicks. boobs or dicks or assholes. And, uh, like, but it was still was, like, too much for YouTube, so they had to censor it. Uh, it's funnier without the censors, though, um, but it's still uncensored on Facebook. And uh, th- they just have, like, a real knack for uh, satire and political commentary. Yeah. Um, and this this movie that they put out, it hits the marks disturbingly well. Like, I was watching this, and as I'm watching it, I have to keep looking away. I go into another tab. Mm-hmm. That, that was kind of my experience. I had trouble sleeping after watching it, to be honest. Like... I've been a certain Valentine before. They do some really good gorilla filmmakings too, um, and like the part where he's uh, putting his mixtape out, and he's they actually went to Coachella, and they were like going down the line, and like just talking to random people. Oh, I want to do another note of a uh, thing about uh, wrong one: Godzilla versus or Batman versus Godzilla. Mm-hmm. There's a trend whenever they have Godzilla fight something Western, they always put its name in front of Godzilla. Hmm. Uh, Godzilla versus King or King Kong versus Godzilla, uh, Batman versus Godzilla. I've noticed this trend. Also, they almost made a movie called Godzilla versus Gamera, but all they had about the plot was literally Godzilla meets Gamera. They fight. I got more info on a live stage show they did called Godzilla versus Gamera hmm. on stage. Do they ever have a Frankenstein versus Godzilla? It was supposed to be on there, but they basically couldn't get the rights to Godzilla, so they took an entire script they had for it and replaced it with Barogon. Huh. Um, just, uh, uh, like who, like, uh, what Western monster would you have fight Godzilla? Oh shit, um, you know, we already have the classic. Uh, it's a hard one. Godzilla's a tough t- uh, act to match. Mm-hmm. I would probably. <sighs> Cloverfield. I mean, that was three months Godzilla 2014. But, like, I would have, like, you know, Godzilla is fighting the mites. He's overwhelmed. Because yeah. if you want to get a fan angry, talk about the red spiral breath. Yeah. Are you familiar with that? When Godzilla, if he needs to kick some ass and his normal ass kickery doesn't work, his fins turn red and his fire turns red. And it's not just one. It's three beams in a spiral. Mm. And it's basically enough to destroy a planet. Like, he could, like, Thanos goes, I have all the... <laughs> Oh, 
no. Dude, if they ever bring back Godzilla and Marvel, which is the chance that's having the chance of uh, me spreading wings and flying, they should have Thanos recruit him. <laughs> I just seen the picture just like, you know, you see like him flying through space. I could see uh, Godzilla versus Venom. Oh, oh man, yeah. Speaking of Venom, you see the new trailer? I haven't seen the new trailer. I, I saw that they finally show Venom in the trailer. It's actually not that bad as I, what I hate is they make him all skinny. When I, when I grew up, remember Spider-Man yeah, 3? Yeah, He was big. He was scary. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was like sort of emblematic of the 90s. So it's all these burly superheroes. But it worked for Venom because yeah. like it's just, uh, it's just that big black silhouette. That's that's really how good a design can be. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see like Venom and just have him like you know. Well, that's the reason that uh, like you mentioned iconic and like that's the reason I think that uh, of all the superhero costumes, uh, Marvel especially with Marvel is uh, Spider Man is the best superhero costume because it doesn't matter like who's like. I think that like if a uh, five-year-old you give a five-year-old like a bunch of uh, blue and red crayons and just say draw Spider-Man, they'll draw Spider-Man. You'll recognize it. You know, ask them to draw who they're trying to Cable. <laughs> it's like good luck with that kid. Well, Deadpool's gonna help with that. Deadpool is also really iconic. Yeah. I mean, it helps that he's ripped off of Deathstroke. Or like Spider-Man, like because I see a lot of people say you know that uh, Deadpool looks a lot like Spider-Man, just the I, design. I, I remember I remember uh, in some comics, uh, Spider-Man had small eyes to make him look more like Deadpool. I kind of want to have a scene in like one of the comics where like, Deadpool gets drunk and puts on a Spider-Man costume, <laughs> and he starts killing people, <laughs> and like Peter Port and Spider-Man starts like, hey, why are the cops shooting at me again? Iron Man walks over, what the fuck did you do in that alleyway? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just love this image of like Tony Stark. You know, he, you know, he's hanging with Pepper Potts, mm -hmm. and he gets a phone call like, "Hey, your your, your kid started killing folks." Uh, he's not my kid. Wait, what? What was that last part? <laughs> uh, yeah, I could see that as a like a storyline in a Deadpool comic, especially. Just mm -hmm. Deadpool has his costume in the wash, and he just has like a Spider-Man costume. He's like, he yeah. got it from Electra. Yeah, really like, kid. Yeah, just had like a yeah. No, he had like the homecoming costume. Uh -huh. um, I do have another Godzilla note. Um, Godzilla King of Monsters is coming out, and that's going to be hell for me. Yeah, uh, you're not looking forward to it? Because I'm going to be watching that trailer over and over and over. Oh, okay. And it's going to be hell for Tony, because he won't ever hear me not shut up about it. <laughs> I bought it, man. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. I mean, I'm, I'd like to see the trailer. Uh, I so. would. Uh, you know, it's being directed by the same guy who did the Death Note adaptation. I mean, it probably won't be that bad. Willem Dafoe is King Ghidorah. Oh, I, I would like to see Willem Dafoe. I mean, Do you know how I would use him? In, God's, in some of the Godzilla movies that have King Ghidorah, he's telepathic. Have him, like, you know, the leader of a JDS staff. We have to stop him. He goes in their head. You just see that, like, three men sitting next to each other, and each one speaks in turn as King Ghidorah. I saw, like, I was looking on the Wikipedia page for King of the Monsters, and I saw Millie Bobby Brown, who plays Eleven in Stranger Things, is on the cast. I'm hoping that she ends up being one of the monster children, who, like, well, that's sort of the term for the kids who are the friends of, the friend of Godzilla. And uh, sh I'm hoping that she plays that role as, like, a girl who's telepathically linked to Godzilla there's and ends a, up being his friend. There's an awesome comic. IDW does this one, it's called, like, Godzilla Legends, where they take um, a Godzilla monster that's kind of lame, like Ingeris or Kamanga, and they give them their own comic that's this big story for them, and they give Titanosaurus one. Huh. Do you know how famous Titanosaurus is? He was a monster who was a good guy who Mechagodzilla persuaded to be evil and he gets thrown off a cliff and he disappeared. Hmm. No one knows where he went. And I really would like to see, and the comic explained that a kid in San Francisco was being bullied and then he got the news Titanosaurus killed the bully. And this kid, who's he's an impulsive eight-year-old, he's a little spoiled brat, whenever he has an issue, he has a giant Spinosaurus to it for him. Also, his name Titanosaurus is supposed to be because there's two of them, and they're going to fuse into Titan. It was like Titan Gigantosaurus, and then they found the fossil. Yeah. So, fuck. Man, I've been cursing a lot of this episode. It's fine. Um, I think I think that we can start wrapping it up. Yeah. You want to read? Uh, I mean, no, we already did our yeah. yeah we did that. 
Um, we should end in a song. I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I mean, I think you've said our, all you need to say about yeah. Godzilla. I, I, don't, I mean, I don't really have that much of a personal history with Godzilla, to be honest. Yeah, I remember yeah. when my first Godzilla movie was the 98 version, and we all know how that that looks in hindsight. Um, it was good advertising. Like, they would show, like, you know, this is how big his foot is. This is his eye. Uh -huh. And uh, I never really got into the the uh, original Godzilla movies because I thought like it just looked kind of stupid, which is interesting because I was more into Power Rangers, which is basically the same thing. I'd like to see Power Rangers. Oh no, Power Rangers versus Godzilla. Oh yeah, and it's just him killing the Megazord for the last five minutes. What happens? What if the Megazord's destroyed? Um, well, that's happened a couple of times in the series, and I think it's like they like rebuild come back with a new one because that's usually when the length like, when the the arc ends and they get new costumes dude you want to be kind of awesome with that like they have this like a whole comic like make it like this giant monster destroying all these mechas make it like pacific rim but there's only one monster and he is like god tier and strength and it follows the guy who who jury rigs next uh, yeah um idw uh hire us Godzilla, king of a king of a monster. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I've been Zach. I've been Tony. And this has been The Monkey Bar. <clears throat>